I hope you're having a great day. In this InDesign tutorial, we're gonna look at how to place images and format them, including Photoshop documents inside of InDesign. Inserting images into InDesign is called placing images. And we can go up to File, down to Place. Command or Control D is the shortcut key for that, and that's one I would recommend learning. So once we hit Place, we can navigate to an Images folder, and we can select any of our imagery. We can even hold Shift to select multiple and place multiple at once. For now, we're just gonna place a single image. And you'll notice a few options down here, including the uh, toggle to toggle the options on or off. I'm gonna uncheck show import options just for a basic image, but it's something you would want to have check marked for a PDF or a Photoshop document. We'll look at that later. So we're gonna open this one image and you'll notice now on your cursor, it shows the preview of the image you're gonna place. This isn't the size it's gonna be. What you can do is a couple of things. You can click and drag to place that image into a frame. And it's just framing this, the actual size of the image. So this is gonna be the same dimensions. Once you let go, it's gonna place that image in there. The other thing you can do is just click on your document and it's gonna place the image in. This one obviously way too large because it's at 100% scale. And you can see this in your links panel. If you go up to window down to links and pop that out. And this extra link information down here you can actually see the actual points per inch is 72 and the effective points per inch is 72 here. So this is sort of like the scale of this image because the dimensions are pretty large here. So as we scale this down and to scale this down, I would use the free transform tool. The shortcut key for that is E. You'll find it in your toolbar over here. And we can then grab a corner, hold shift and option or alt on windows to scale this down in proportion. And obviously it's still pretty large. You can zoom out with command or control plus and minus, and we can do the same thing. We can scale this down until it's the right size. Now, another way to zoom in and out is to press the Z key and the click and drag left and right to zoom in and out. So we can zoom back in just like that. Now let's press V for the selection tool and just take a look at this again. The effective PPI is now 602. I would recommend if you're printing this out, you're gonna have your effective PPI at 300. And really what you would wanna do is go back to that photo and make sure the photo itself is 300 DPI or PPI. You can do that in Photoshop. Uh, if it is 72, that's okay, but don't take it for what it is when you place it in. You're gonna want the effective PPI to at least be 300. And that gets affected just by scaling up and down. Notice now it's 487. So as we scale that up, once we hit 300, that's as large as I would wanna put that on my document so that's still high quality when I go to print it or when I send it off to be printed. So we've got this photo in here. And the way that photos work here in InDesign, they're kind of like images inside of frames. So you've got this frame around the outside, and as long as you have your selection tool selected up here, the shortcut key for that is V, you can adjust this frame. So we could just crop it in, essentially, uh, and the photo sits there underneath, but we can move this frame around. We can also make it bigger than the photo. So now the photo you see cuts off, but the frame actually keeps going. So if we wanted to adjust the frame to, let's say, be the width of our margin here. If we wanted to scale this up and the photo doesn't fit, right click on our photo and go down to fitting. And there's lots of options to fill that frame. You can fill it proportionally or you can fit your content proportionally. There's a difference between these two. Fitting the content means the whole image will show inside this frame. Proportionally means it won't skew it. If we go back to fitting, fill the frame means we're gonna fill the frame, but we're also gonna not skew the image. So we're gonna be proportional with it. So it's basically gonna zoom in. Now, if this doesn't hit the right section of your image, you see this little dot and then the hand icon? You can click on this and you'll see a red outline. That's your image underneath the frame. So we can actually click and drag this around if we want to. If you hold shift, it'll keep it locked in to just left or right or vertical up and down. And you can move this to position it inside of the frame how you want it. Now, if we go back and look at some of the other fitting options, there's also fit frame and fit content frame. Watch what happens when I do those and we don't have proportionally. Now you'll see that it starts to skew our actual image because it just crams it into the frame size without regard to keeping proportion of the image. So I pretty much never used that one. 
unless you were doing something like a pattern and the proportion doesn't matter. But if it's a real photo, you're gonna to wanna to use these like fill frame or fit content proportionally. Uh, that's what I would recommend. So you can move this around. We can still, if we click on this with the hand tool and we see the outline, the red outline, we can actually scale the image inside of the frame without scaling the frame itself. Notice we still have our frame selected. And another thing that we can do here is actually insert images into pre-existing frames. If I were to just create a shape out here, the rectangle tool is M, so I could create a rectangle or other types of shapes. We'll look at that here in a second. Or I could even create a frame if I wanted to. These are gonna act very similarly to each other. The rectangles and such can also have strokes and fills on them, so like color with them. But if we just create some sort of rectangle out here, this rectangle can actually have a photo placed into it. Multiple ways of doing that. One of the main ways though, if you have it selected, and you go up to file down to place again, remember command or control D. And if we select another photo, this option right here, replace selected item, means it's going to basically insert that photo into what you have selected on your document. So we've got this frame selected. We're gonna replace that selected item with this photo. If we hit open, it's gonna put the photo inside of this frame. Now look at one thing here before we get into the photo not even fitting. The outline of the frame, because remember I said it can have a stroke or a fill, is a stroke of black. And you can see that here, there's a black outline. So if you did not want that, you would go in here, you can select the stroke option here on the left, and you can actually get rid of that really quickly just by clicking this color option down here and selecting and clicking and holding and selecting apply none. The other way you can do that is by checking your properties panel when you have an object like this selected and you'll see the fill, the stroke, corners, everything over here as well. You could just take this to zero if you wanted to and if you want a stroke you can add them just like that as well. So once again this just fit the content in there at 100% scale which would be the PPI of the image 72. So what we can do is just right click fit it and this one, I think I might fit content proportionally so I can see my whole image. There it is. Now, one thing you might do is just remember, you can click on this, you can scale this up, holding shift and option or alt, you can see the scale of the photo. If you let go, it's still remaining only visible inside of the frame, so you could move this around and position it how you want. So that's pretty cool. If you understand that concept, images are inside of frames. The frames, you can just click and drag to sort of crop it in. The image, if we click on this hand tool, is sort of inside of this frame. We can move it around really easily. We can also scale it, just making sure we hold shift as well to keep it proportional. And then we can use those quick options like selecting this frame or shape and then going down to fitting really quick just to scale it up or down really quickly. That's an easy way if you you know change this frame size uh, just to really quickly scale and move instead of trying to fit it yourself. You can just fill that frame proportionally really quickly and then sort of move it around if you need to. Now one other thing here is like we did before, we created a rectangle, but you could easily create a shape like a, an ellipse or hold shift and it's gonna create a perfect circle just like this. And once again, if we don't want that stroke, we can just hit zero. If we have this selected, actually if we don't have it selected, let me show you how to place an image inside of this circle here. We can grab that same one, open it up, and then now we're hovering. We can actually click on this circle and it's gonna place it inside of there. And once again, really quickly fill frame proportionally, boom. We got that right in there. We can grab it if we wanted to scale it up a little bit and move this around just like that. So you can easily place images into other shapes like circles. You can also place multiple images. So if we go back down to place and we grab both of these here, we can open them up. And you'll notice now in parentheses by my cursor is the number two. If you don't wanna place this image first, we can use our left and right arrow keys just to toggle through each image that we're gonna be placing. And instead of just clicking, we can actually click and drag and place these out here. Uh, so we can just place these individual photos. It'll help us line them up sometimes just like this. So we create the same size. Another way to create a grid pattern is while we are hovering with these photos ready to place, we can hold command and shift and create a little grid out here. And it's gonna place the photos inside of the grid just like that. So really quick way to just lay out your photos 
uh, inside of a grid. You can select these like before and fill the frames proportionally all together just like that by clicking and dragging over both of them and right clicking. So that's really quick. Now the other thing, if we wanted to place a different type of file, like not just a JPEG, if we wanted to place a PSD file, we can go back up to file place or command or control D. You should use that shortcut key now. I'm gonna select this Photoshop file, which includes a cutout of an image like a person, and we're gonna show import options. Make sure you show import options on this one, hit open. And we have these import options where we can adjust what layers are visible within this Photoshop document when we place it. So I could select the background if I wanted to. In this case, I know that I cut that background out, so I don't want that background selected. So I have this cutout image within a Photoshop document. I don't have to save it out as a PNG. I can leave it editable in that Photoshop document, hit OK, and we're gonna place it in just the same way. If we click, it's obviously way too large. So what I might do is just click and drag to create a quick frame, just like that. And then you can place this anywhere you want. We can use E as the shortcut key for free transform, holding shift to transform up on this. We can crop in, pressing V to that selection tool. We can just crop this frame in if we want to. And we can always move this image over, holding shift just like that. And so now the frame goes to the edge. You can a lot of times allow that frame to go off the page, then just hit the W key to toggle your preview mode. So you can actually preview this with or without the bleed. And the last thing here to point out, really cool feature is in that links panel, we can actually go in and relink files, like relink photos that are on your page and just select another photo or relink Photoshop documents. The other thing we can do is actually edit the original. So if I clicked on that, it's gonna go over to Photoshop and allow me to make edits to this. So if I were to quickly just paint on top of this like that and click save, then I go back over to InDesign and it updates that. If it doesn't update that, all you have to do is click the update link button. But now we've painted over that so you can actually edit files in InDesign from your links panel as well. You can also actually last thing, since we have this frame selected, let's go ahead and delete out a couple things here. So we have this frame over here. We're going to fill it proportionally. If we press A for the direct selection tool, we can actually select the points of the frame and move those in. We can also press P for the pen tool and add points. As long as this frame is selected, we can add points here when it's a little plus icon. We can press A and move this point. Whoops, we missed our point here. All right, so we can zoom in, select this, press P for the pen tool, add a point in. And now this point, we can select it just like that and move it around. We can also create curves if we hold Option or Alt with that pen tool. We can create curves with these points as well, just like that. And then using that A or direct selection tool, you can find those points, drag them around. And also you can select points and in your properties panel, you can adjust the corner as well. So you could do a fancy corner or a rounded corner and notice how these corners are rounded now. And you can up the radius of those corners just like that. So you can really create a lot of different effects. This is kind of messed up because of our points. So I could always uh, use the pen tool to remove a point as well with it selected. And yeah, that's how you can create lots of different shapes of your frames here in Adobe InDesign.